Hello everyone, welcome back to Kingdom Hearts 3, and this is Scala at Kyla. I thought it would be the perfect site to have some nice background music, as it's one of the best tracks in the series, honestly. That's Donald Duck, he has a nice tushy. This is Goofy, he's looking at me, uh, expecting something. Not much is gonna be happening in terms of action. We're not gonna be fighting any of those, those silly enemies, right? None of those mysterious adversaries. Uh, turns out this game has secret reports, as seen right here. You unlock them by, once you load up a clear save, you can go and take on various battle gates throughout the game in the various worlds. And of the 13 main ones that are just kind of like enemy mob fights and like some have some mini bosses or old bosses in them, though those are kind of few and far between, they all yield secret reports. And there are 13 of them. And, of course, the 14th Battle Gate is something we will be covering on video. Don't worry. But for now, I wanted to sit down and read these secret reports, all 13, and maybe decode or discuss what they mean. So, I thought that'd be fun. Let's get started. Recollections. Am I alive? I awoke in a cell alone until the researchers came with their tests and their prodding to uncover my identity. I had no answer to offer them. Four friends and a key. That is the sum total of my memory. I could not even recall my name. I was simply called X there. My only solace was the time I spent talking with the two boys who would visit from time to time. One day, a man came to take me from the prison. I could not see him for the darkness, save that he wore an eye patch. Even now, years on, I feel no closer to understanding who or what I am. May my heart be my guiding key. Unknown. So, uh, I've only read one of these reports, and I've kind of like heard things from other people talking about them, because I wanted to wait to record this first. I also pulled up notes, because the Kingdom Hearts 3 Ultimania is out, and someone on Twitter posted translation stuff for like summaries i guess uh, like extra stuff with it like ultimania commentary for it so i thought that'd be interesting to also pull up for this video so this character is uh x we know that x is a girl because uh she's like two two boys visited me and we know that axel and syx when they uh were younger snuck into the Radiant Garden Castle to meet with a girl who mysteriously disappeared. This girl also, um, for some reason, Anson the Wise seems to have hit her away or something, but he also doesn't remember it. There's, just, there's a lot of layers to this character, and they already have clues of who this might be. Now, here's what the Ultimania commentary apparently says about it. The, right, uh, the writer is a girl known as Subject X, who is being used as a test subject in Ansem the Wise's castle. She is the same girl being sought after by Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, as well as the girl Axel and Syx spoke of. And uh, highlighting the various phrases, four friends and a key. The wording insinuates a deep relationship between four friends and a key, the Keyblade. The saying, may my heart be my guide, and key is connected in that and implies she's someone who came from the ancient past. Or a character that is suddenly totally into using that phrase, like Goofy. Uh, the two boys who come sometimes is referencing, of course, Axel and Sykes, or Lee and Isa, who lived in Radiant Garden. They would slip into the castle, which is something that we saw in Birth by Sleep, when they're like, are you... They, they had this moment when you finished Ventus's version of the Radiant Garden world in Birth by Sleep, where uh, Syx and Axe were like, you ready to go? And they go in, and then I, I believe during one of the credit scenes, they get kicked out by the guards. Uh, so they filled in that blank with, they went to go see a girl. And then, the, of course, there's the I saw the man with the eye patch, and uh, that would have to be Zigbar or Bray at that point. Which, of course, he became one eyed during the events of Birth by Sleep and was around during the same time, so that fits together. But of course, the question here is, who is it? Now, given the fact that um, 
like like there's two possibilities there it's like could it be could it be ava for example because you know she was a part of the foretellers and the foretellers were five people right pretty sure they were and uh but i don't think it's that necessarily because i feel like um she she's just been missing the whole time and i very much doubt given what they did in the epilogue that the way Brig or Zigbar says that Ava didn't make it implies that, you know, he hasn't seen her since uh, the stuff that happened in the mobile game. So I'm very much assuming that's what's going on. So the only other character at the top of my head that makes sense for Subject X would be Skuld. Now, for those who uh, haven't seen the Union Cross stuff, Skuld is the... Um, dark-haired girl who is one of the union leaders in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. She is the only female union leader, and she's part of a group of five. Uh, on top of that, we have um, Syx, who's themed after the moon. We have Axel, who, if you remember in Days, he talks about how the sun sets red, so it makes sense he's kind of like the opposite of Syx in a way. And the theme for Skuld, at least in parts of her outfit, are stars. So a sun, moon, star theming trio motif would kind of work for her character. Why is she suddenly in the current day? And she was apparently something has happened to her that people are prodding her and testing her. And then also she, she is asking what she is, is also a very interesting thing. So already... These reports are, like, really digging in. Also, I may get things wrong as I uh, address things in these secret reports, um, which I'm fine with because this is new Kingdom Hearts material. It's been a while since I've had the opportunity to be wrong about new shit with Kingdom Hearts. So feel free. We can have a dialogue in the comments, maybe. Uh, report number two. Mark of Mastery Journal. So, in case you're wondering, these reports are written by different people. And they are just a collection of reports that don't have a... That all don't necessarily have the same theme, which is interesting. So, some days have passed since I set off on my journey to prepare for the Mark of Mastery examination. Ericus asked for leave to undertake the same pilgrimage. But apparently I am to be first to tour the worlds written of in the old fairy tales. Until a few short years ago... I'd known only my own world, a speck of land surrounded by sea. But how would I dreamed of yearned for the world beyond, and granted guidance from the future, I left that nest behind. As I treaded the path to my master's side, I came in contact with darkness in many forms, and even then, as by instinct, terrifying as his power was, it could be harnessed, mastered. Ericus is a blue blood. Descended from the very first masters in the age of fairy tales. But I did not come this far to indulge in adulation. I will be his peer, his equal, and to do that I must learn to wield the power born from both darkness and light in proper balance. Xehanort. So, this report would have to be of young Xehanort when he's preparing for his Mark of Mastery exam. He's examining the darkness... And the most interesting thing he points out here is that Ericus is a blue blood, which is apparently, like, he is a descendant of the Keyblade Masters and Wielders from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, because Union Cross exists at least on paper from the Age of Fairy Tales. Like, the origin, like, the original Keyblade Wielders. So, that's always cool. Which kind of makes sense. He's like, he has the general design of an old like samurai also he's his design in general is based on uh sakaguchi who was the you know the guy behind the final fantasy series so it kind of makes sense that you know square decided to make ericus this like one of the a key important old figure but that's pretty good let me look at what the notes here say in regards to this the report about young xehanort this is him forming his ideology, of course, uh, with darkness can be controlled, it needn't be feared, and creating a perfect balance between light and dark. Not one taking over the other, which, you know, is something that isn't, isn't, too, uh, isn't too surprising. Uh, according to director Tetsuya Nomura, these first masters, these blue bloods, 
are people in the Dandelions who appear in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and aren't related to the Master of Masters or Foretellers. So, uh, I believe a lot of people were thinking that the direct descendant would be Brain. Uh, because his face was recently shown, because usually he's like a dude in a hat and you don't really, like, see his face clearly. And he's, like, making some major moves in that, which... Once there's a little bit more story updating Union Cross, I'll be doing a video catching up on all the stuff we've missed since, uh, the introduction of Elrena. And we'll, uh be going into that but it's looking like it might be him i don't know if this confirms it further but that is report two and now you can see why this is going to be a long video report three experiments of the heart notes on subject x excerpt one subject was found in the central square shortly after dawn approximately 15 years old after seven days observation she spoke her first words but could not provide a name. Subject exhibits signs of profound amnesia and displays concern about which world this is. Her words suggest that she's departed her home world with others, though she cannot recall the names of her erstwhile companions. All efforts to explore those memories have met with a rejection response. After his initial experiments on me, Ansem the Wise ceased his research into the heart. His hand stayed by some fear I cannot fathom. Yet this new subject is like me, devoid of memories. She is the perfect sample upon which to continue my master's work. She too could benefit from it. By traversing the heart, we have a direct path into memory. I myself have begun to reclaim my lost past thanks to these very experiments. Who is she? Whence has she come? These are questions no scientist could ignore. And the words she muttered, May your heart be your guiding key. Xehanort. So, this is Xehanort again, but it's the different one. This is, uh, this would be in the intervening time between Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 1. This is the apprentice Xehanort. So Xehanort has, uh, at this point taken over Terra. Uh, has lost some of his memories, I believe. I, I believe, and it is always weird about what, what was going on with that, that whole thing. But he's taken in by Ansem the Wise. Apparently, Ansem the Wise experimented on Xehanort to learn about the mysteries of the heart, and then just cut it off. Just, just said, no, we're not doing it anymore, which is why he rejects Xehanort's proposals in Kingdom Hearts 2 in those flashbacks. And, uh, it seems one of the people that Apprentice Xehanort experimented on was a uh, subject X who was found in the in the central square Shortly after dawn and she was about 15 years old Which tells me that, that there isn't like a big time jump Because if we're gonna go on my assumption that this is supposed to be sculled then she ends up going through something an event where she's separated from the other union leaders and wakes up here in 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 our in our you know radiant garden our normal world that isn't you know connected from the other thing and seeing as some stuff's popping off in union cross i wouldn't be surprised if we don't have to wait very long for uh that aspect to get paid off from this game i say that it could be a year from now and it's kingdom hearts you never want you never know when they're gonna fucking do payoff stuff especially in that mobile game There's monthly updates that are like three minutes long Anyway, th uh, this is all, like, really, really interesting. Uh, but let's move on. I don't need to dwell if there's not a lot going on. It, you know, it's not like Report 1 where there's a lot to unpack. However, this is Excerpt 2 of the same Experiments of the Heart entry. Subject's memories have not returned, and our conversations remain less than lucid. What fragments can be gleaned evoke a bygone world? Like one out of fairy tales. As improbable as it seems, the question may not be where she has come from, but when. If she truly has crossed through time, the prospect of probing her heart is all the more compelling. My pilot studies used a handful of subjects, but none possessed the fortitude to endure them. Ultimately, all suffered mental collapse. I knew it would be a heavy blow to lose a subject as unique as she. Uh, just, you know, Xehanort casually going, yeah, uh... Multiple people become brain dead, but hey, I, I need to be a bit more careful 
on this young girl. Upon discovering the tests I've been conducting, my master demanded that I cease my work immediately and destroy what research I have compiled. Worse still, he ordered the release of my remaining subjects. She is gone. Where is Subject X now? Has wise Master Ansem hidden her away? Whatever the case, I will not be deterred. I will take her place as the first subject in the grand experiment to come. So at this point, I can only assume that he, he begins splitting hearts. And it ends up going through that because... Uh, again, I'm just going to call her Skull because I assume that's who it is. Uh, it basically went missing. And I assume everyone was going to be released. And, uh... But instead of what Ansem had intended of all of the, um, all the subjects just leaving normally, Bragg intercepted and took this girl. But to where? Who knows? Because there's a whole lot more going on with Bragg slash Zigbar now since he's been revealed to be Lushu the whole fucking time. <laughs> so, that's Secret Report 4, number 5, Memoirs. Alright, this must be a, uh, this must be a new one. Let's see. That castle was a wonderland to us children. Within its walls, Ansem the Wise conducted his research, and the fruits it bore allowed everyone outside to live in peace and happiness. That alone was enough to stoke our interest. Though not all of the rumors that escaped its walls were so benevolent, by night the muffled sounds of human wails emerged. There is talk of dangerous human experimentation. Lee and I couldn't help but hatch a plot to steal inside and state and sate our curiosity. The two who stood guard at the gates were researchers themselves, though you wouldn't think it to see them massive and barrel chested as they were. So at this point we you can see that this is being written by by Syx slash Isa, and of course he's talking about Lee slash Axel, and the two massive barrel chested researcher guards being Dylan and, and Alias. Uh you may know them by their nobody names, uh Zaldin and Lexius. Uh, slipping past the duo was only the first hurdle. It proved one not easily cleared. We were found and tossed out on our ears time and time again, which is looping it back to Birth by Sleep's credits montage where you see uh, Zaldin and Lexi just throw uh, Axel and Sykes out on their ass, which is uh, pretty good. I'm going to be using nobody names most of the time just because I prefer those names. I've been growing up with those names. Go away. <laughs> On the day we finally secured our entry, we descended the long spiral stair at the heart of the castle to find a dark space below it, lined with cages. There wasn't enough light to see if they were inhabited, and we were in no position to call out to any occupants within. If you'll remember in Kingdom Hearts 2, there is a cutscene in the final mix version where Xemnas descends a spiral staircase and then enters a room with cages. They are directly referencing that area there, which means at the end of that hallway, I would assume, is the Chamber of Repose, which is uh, where Aqua's armor was kept and also had the big thinking chair that Xemnas used. I'm surprised that they straight up described this. I love the consistency. I I'm very surprised. Yet we could feel it, a definite presence there in the back. Terror washed over us, and we immediately regretted coming. But just as we returned to flee, we heard the faintest of voices. The urge to run was nigh overpowering, but someone or something beckoned us on. There, framed by a tenuous sliver of light, we found her. And that is uh, Sykes's report. Moving on to six, it's his second part of his memoirs. It was too dim to make out her features. We spoke to her in hushed whispers. Who was she? Why was she imprisoned here? She had no answers for us, had no memories at all. She was an enigma, but I knew I wanted to help her. And so we continued our infiltrations. Most of them stopped short at the castle gates. When we did manage our way inside, we spoke with her. That was all the t comfort two children like us could offer. But Lee had other ideas. He was determined to free her. We slipped into the castle that day knowing only that we wanted with all our hearts to save her. But we did not find her inside on that day or the next, or any of our subsequent visits. Had she been moved? Had we simply imagined her? Lee and I knew there was only one way to be certain. 
And so we stand before the castle gates today, not as trespassing children, but in order to become Ansem the Wise's newest apprentice. So, uh, this establishes a few things. They kept sneaking in to talk, to talk with her, and at some point she disappears, likely in response to the fact that Ansem the Wise caught on and wanted everyone released, and then Zigbar ends up taking her away. Which means that they kind of did this for nothing, And but it does explain one thing. Why did Syx and Axel become researchers for Ansem the Wise? We have that answer now. Next up, we have secret report number, number seven on the replica program and reanimation. Following my erasure and my recompletion as a human, I did not awaken right away. Perhaps the damage was exceptionally grave. Even after waking, I remained in bed, pondering my next course of action. In my work on the replica program for the organization, I produced some 20 vessels. Most of the early results were failures. Not one of them granted a number. The first success to emerge from that early lot was the Riku replica. Subsequently, Shion, no I, was essentially indistinguishable from a natural human, though she became unstable due to the influence of others. Using those two as my foundation, I worked to construct a number of nigh-perfect replicates, but just as they near completion, my efforts were cut short. I suspect Xehanort aims to use both the initial lot as well as the unused replicas for my late from my later work. I arose today and decided to walk out to the square, my first outing in some time, yet my stroll was interrupted when a surprising visitor appeared with an unexpected offer. Though younger than me, he'd risen to become Xemnas's right hand. I accepted his terms and became a nobody once more. Easier to gain access to the old replica program that way. Whatever it takes to atone. So, this is Vexen, of course, and it establishes some of the work he did on replica stuff, circa, like, Chain of Memories and 358 Days Over 2, uh, which is interesting. It looked like uh, he's suspecting, of course, Xehanort aims to use the leftover work to, you know, plug hearts into them and continue the work on his vessels in general, and um, Sykes just approaches... Approaches Vexen, just going, hey, uh, you know, you wanna, you wanna get back to, get back to work with us, and Vexen wants to atone, so he takes, he takes him up on, on that offer, which I think is um, interesting here. So uh, according to some of the translations here, the uh, the beginning part of this here is very interesting in that. He says, even after waking, I remained in bed, and, you know, he didn't awaken right, uh, right away because of the damage. Uh, the game is implying that because Vexen eats so much shit by having his insides blown out and burned, because uh, that's how he dies, <laughs> uh, to Axel and Chain of Memories, that he that is why he doesn't immediately wake up in Dream Drop Distance, because he just got bodied so hard that he needed more time to recover, which I think is interesting that your body wouldn't, you know, sustain some of that damage. Which I guess makes sense. I think that, I think that works. I mean, hey, you can tell me whatever you want, fucking, you know, as long as it doesn't seem impossible to, to believe, I, I don't get a problem with it. Uh, next up, all right, we did seven, right? Uh, yeah, we did. So, eight. The Real Organization. Xehanort seeks to gather 12 vessels which together, with his true, actual self, he considers the real Organization 13. Now that he has the numbers he needs, Demix and I are treated as reserves. Several others who served Xemnas and the old organization have followed the same course as mine, electing to abandon their newly restored humanity and rejoin the real organization as nobodies. But not Xemnas. Xemnas cannot exist in the present because there's already a Xehanort here, the old man in charge. The old man's humanity prevents his heartless and nobody, other others that were vanquished in the past, and his younger self from being denizens of this time. To circumvent this, Xehanort is using the prototype replicas I created in the past as containers, plucking his other selves' hearts from the time they existed. 
Xehanort ordered me to refine the prototypes to make them closer still to the real thing, perfecting my creations so they may house true flesh and blood humans. Suits, uh, suits my own purposes as well. All that remains for my atonement is to devise a way to pass on as many of the vessels as I can to those who truly deserve them. So, uh, what does this establish? Um, the, the, the fact that Xehanort clearly sees that both Vexen and Demix uh, uh, are, are generally weak, weak sauce when it comes to power. So he puts them in the reserves, which means uh, they essentially had 15 darknesses at that point. Good to have a backup plan. I actually like the villain team going, we have too many. Like, I like, I like that, that, that foresight. Uh, it also establishes uh, kind of the situation of all these villains showing up uh, to, to make it so that they could have uh, Xemnas and Ansem Seeker of Darkness as strong as they are. They simply time traveled, grabbed their hearts, chucked them in temp bodies, old replicas, and that's how it works. So basically, when you defeat them in this game, you shatter their body and destroy it, and then their heart uh, is forced to return to their original timeline. And as you know, they, they aren't going to remember the things that happened uh, during their little time hopping. And and boom, 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 they get they get their asses kicked in their respective games. So that's what's going on with that. Moving on from there, we have Secret Report 9. Ansem Code... Cons cons conspectus? What the fuck's a conspectus? I have poured over the data my master entrusted to Riku. Here, I offer my preliminary conclusions. Within Sora's heart are three compartmentalized boxes, each containing the heart of another. One box holds Roxas, another holds a second heart that has been with Sora nearly as long. That would be Shion. The third has held his heart for much longer. These hearts have melded with Sora's and no longer have voices of their own. Any attempt to mechanically extract them could prove as dire for Sora as what caused him to become a heartless in the first place. First, a vessel for each heart must be readied, then a spark of some sort is required to induce its waking. Uh, you'll notice that when Roxas came back, Sora's body sparked, so that's a bit literal. Obviously, the ideal solution is to restore each heart to its own body, but whatever the case for the two unknown individuals, Roxas possesses no such thing. Same is true for Namine, who we believe resides in Kairi's heart. Still, if alternate bodies can be secured for them, all their hearts required to be awakened is that spark. People they cared for and who cared for them, who can show them the way home. Complete and perfect digitalization of the heart is impossible. We can only hope to partially reconstruct it. Thus, I see no way forward but to extract the hearts we so desperately need directly from within Sora. Fortunately, the data stored in Twilight Town contains a near-perfect record of the memories of those who live there, and for Roxas and Namine especially, this is crucial. So it's a lot about what's going on with Sora, with the various hearts in him, how they're going to try and get back Roxas, which is readying that replica that they get uh, toward the end of the game. Uh, using the Roxas data, and of course the Nominate data, if you want to count when she comes back, and then the spark, that connection that Sora has that helps bring everything together. And this is, of course, written by Zexion, or Ienzo, which we kind of get a new context for him, where it sounds like he was just straight up lied to and implied that Anson the Wise, his, like, foster father, basically, abandoned them, which made him join the organization because he hated him so i kind of like how they changed up his character because he didn't you know aside from that he didn't have a lot going on and i actually like the route they took with him so moving on here's the second zexian report as for how to contain their hearts the only conceivable option is the replicas if we transfer in the digital memories from the twilight town archive the replicas should be able to reconstruct each individual's human appearance with near-perfect results. Then their hearts need only the right spark to wake them, so they may find their way out of Sora and Kairi and into those newly made bodies. The replica program was truly revolutionary, but it was incomplete at the time of the old organization's dissolution. Without Evan, 
how are we to further the research? We need at least three replicas, one for Roxas, one for Namine, and one for the unknown stowaway within Sora's heart. These are difficult quandaries, but as I work through my master's data, I find myself remembering the taste of ice cream. When I was a boy, he would bring me some when we took walks together. There will be a time to regret my betrayal later. For now, my focus must be on restoring Roxas and Namine and proving my master had good intentions. So, so overall, these are pretty good reports of just kind of setting up a lot of what's going on uh, with restoring everyone and just stuff like uh, if transferring the memories and the memories that they had and getting their heart in there and boom, the, the replica will just look like a normal person and the replicas are basically perfect humans at this point, which is interesting, or I'm sorry, perfect somebodies because that is what the human term is in Kingdom Hearts. Somebodies? Not nobodies. Somebodies. We, uh, double checking. I don't want to skip any of these by accident. Uh, we're on to report 11. So, let's see. Observations and is it up to... Ooh, they, yeah, okay. This is a set of three. I'm gonna assume... Okay, it took like half a cent for me to go. This is probably Lucia. I've seen it through. The Keyblade War unfolded exactly as written on the lost page. Now the Keyblade, the master entrusted to me, must be bequeathed to another. Five Union leaders have been chosen from the surviving Dandelions. Those, of course, being Brain, Ventus, Lorium, Scald, and Ephemer. So they are the Union Cross leaders. Uh, originally, it was going to be Strelitzia, but, you know, shit happens. I'll pass the Keyblade to one of them, and then continue watching the future unfold. Okay, so one of them has the... Oh, man. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yet it seems that someone has pulled the old switcheroo. One of the five is an imposter. Someone the Master did not choose. They represent a virus in the pro program he so carefully wore out. The virus has begun a strange undertaking. A reckless plot to allow the Five to escape into another world line. Surely such a thing can't be possible. We're talking about the same trick that allowed the Dandelions to transfer to other world lines after the Keyblade War. But these children are no masters. They have the means, unless, of course, a certain Lady of Magic summoned here from the future knows more than I do. Lady of Magic. The whole Union Leader thing was supposed to be by the books. These new events just another phase in the Master's grand plan. So, this is clearly Lushu, who is possessing Zigbar, as you remember from the epilogue. Sets up a few things. The Keyblade War unfolded um, in Kingdom Hearts Key, in the mobile game. But then, it, it didn't happen, or, you know, for the Dandelions, because what they did was they transferred to a different world line. Now, I don't know what the fuck a world line is exactly, but I'm going to go ahead. I've heard the term used, and... Upon hearing the concept called World Line, I assume it's another universe and like another reality. Uh, and like, to, to put it in perspective, for example, notice that there's like 18 fucking scholars back there. I think it's kind of like that where there's like, there's a different, there's a different like Agrabah from the other Agrabah that exists. It's kind of like that concept. And they just moved to another one so that uh, so that these Keyblade wielders could survive. Another aspect that is set up here is that Lushu was to give one of the five Union leaders, that is Scald, Ephemer, Ventus, uh, Lorium, or Brain, the the no-name Keyblade, Z Master Xehanort's Keyblade as we know it. Uh, but there's a couple of problems here. Number one. We also know that one of the Dandelions is a Blue Blood, uh, which is like a descendant of Master Ericus' family, um, or like one of the original members, you know, descended with, you know, the opposite of that. You know what I'm talking about. And we also know that there is a traitor, or someone who snuck in as a Union leader, which we already knew from Union Cross, because Strelitzia was meant to be a Union leader, but was murdered. The other thing, however, is that a, the term a virus was was used somewhere in here uh which is also very very interesting saying they represent a virus in the program he the master of masters so carefully wrote 
Uh, I believe in recent updates, it's been revealed that, um, that Brain said that he will become a virus. <laughs> and Bug, I think, like, Bug Blocks are showing up in Union Cross. So once again, Kingdom Hearts gotta be literal. <laughs> So at this point, I can only assume, and it's my best guess, that Brain is this person who inserted himself as a union leader. Uh, also ended up getting Lu Shu slash the Master of Masters slash Master Xehanort's Keyblade, and he is the owner of it. And also, that would I I I'm gonna I'm gonna say that above all else, the one thing that definitely is gonna be right, I feel like uh, Brain is. Uh, an ancestor to Ericus. He is that that specific blue blood, which uh, would be interesting. That's what I'm thinking. We can talk about it in the comments. Uh, other people think it's different, but there's a lot to unpack here. Also, let's not forget. Let's not forget. Uh, there's another thing in here. A, a certain lady of magic summoned here from the future knows more than I do, which is Maleficent. <laughs> because Maleficent traveled all the way back to the... <laughs> to the past, which they retconned, uh, and actually it's not a retcon, that's not how that works, they just fucking, they just added a plot line. So basically when Riku stabs Maleficent in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then she becomes a dragon, they say that at that point she travels back to the mobile game's time, and uh, by the time she like comes back is her revival in Kingdom Hearts 2, the Kingdom Hearts 3 Ultimania does confirm that is the timeline of events of she clashes with Sora and the gang in Kingdom Hearts 1. She goes to the past through her heart being uh, pierced because uh, that's how time travel rules are able to work. She knows this because she talked to Master Xehanort in Birth by Sleep. She goes to Union Cross. She learns stuff about the mysterious black box. She returns to the future and she returns as her revival in Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, I know some people might want to complain about the story of Kingdom Hearts, but thankfully, we only accept the criticism of people who enjoy stories here. And thankfully, there's nothing to criticize. I don't care about your opinion. Secret report number 12, baby! Observations excerpt 2. Even on a world line with no Keyblade War, peace is but a dream. In the absence of us and our master, a darkness arrived, one that shall surely lead the world to yet another demise. Mm. Amid the chaos, I bequeathed my Keyblade to one of the Union leaders, just as Master instructed. I watched as the five were sent to another world line, at no small cost, ensuring the line of Keyblade wielders will live on. And now, Keybladeless, I must depart this land to fulfill my final task. This means casting my own body aside and sojourning my heart in, heart in vessel after vessel, as many as it takes. But I will continue gazing upon each passing era, one unto the next. In time, be it years or decades, centuries or millennia, I will meet the five once more. Somewhere in this cyclical history of bequeathings, a chosen one will appear and reenact the Keyblade War. When this scapegoat arrives and takes my Keyblade in hand, that will be the time to take the stage and finish my role. The Lost Masters will awaken. So, Lushu establishes a few things here. One, he gave, he g before they jump to the Union Cross world line, he gives one of those five dandelions the Keyblade. I'm going to assume it is Brain, so he ended up picking the wrong one. <laughs> uh, uh, who knows? Who, kno who knows how things are going to turn out? So that ends up happening. Lushu then establishes that he's uh, abandoning his body and body hopping so that he can live in live indefinitely until... Someone using the Master of Masters Keyblade uh, brings forth another Keyblade War. And then something about the Lost Masters will return once all of that happens. Meaning that Master Xehanort is actually a scapegoat. Which, you know... I, I think we all had to kind of assume by the end that either this arc was going to end with Master Xehanort not being the most important guy anymore... Or he was the villain, and then a new villain will be set up that's uh, disconnected from it. But, you know, everything's got to be connected. The final report. Observations, excerpt three. Seems this body, this name will be my last. The lives I have lived over the ages could fill volumes. 
but for now I must focus on what matters most. The Keyblade has been successfully passed down, generation to generation, and it seems a Keyblade Master devoted to the darkness may finally arise. Until now, I've watched over the course of events from a distance. Perhaps the time has come to intervene. I do only play the role of a fool uh, desirous of the Keyblade's power. I will don the mask of his ally in order to keep watch over my Keyblade from close by. The Gazing Eye. A Keyblade forged from the eye of the Master of Masters. He passed it to me, as I have to others. And through it, he can see the future. All that will ever come to pass. Spanning the ages and body after body, life after life, my task has been keep vigil over the eye as it passes from hand to hand. It has been a long time. Longer than I can express. But now at last, the Keyblade War has begun, and Kingdom Hearts will open. A true and complete Kingdom Hearts. Both uh, born of the clash between darkness and light, I will soon be reunited with my old companions, and in that moment, my long vigil will reach its end. He will return. So, this last report uh, establishes that uh, Lushu eventually encounters uh, Xehanort. By this point, he has uh, possessed the body that is called Brag, and he ends up joining him because he desires the Keyblade, which is just a front of he wants to assist him because he sees, hey, this, this Keyblade Master is all about darkness, and he's already interested in the Keyblade War stuff. This is the moment. And that is why Zigbar is so close and plays, uh, puts his lot in with Xehanort. Uh, aside from that, it seems that once the Keyblade War is done, uh, Lushu will then summon back the five foretellers, which are, in fact, the Lost Masters. And this, of course, ends with He Will Return, which I can only assume would be the Master of Masters? Who else would Lushu speak of at this point? We, you know, it could be someone else. There could be a new character uh, introduced. But I'm pretty sure the Master of Masters will return and he will bring himself and his foretellers together for whatever comes next. And with that, that's the 13 report. So to capital, uh, to cap it off, here's my interpretation of some of the information we got. Uh, Subject X is most likely Skald, one of our Union Cross characters who, upon traveling to this new world line from the Union Cross one, ends up getting all jumbled up and doesn't remember certain things and is all, like, screwed up and separated from her friends. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, other stuff. Ericus is a descendant, likely, of the character Brain, who seems to be, uh, possibly the person who killed Strelitzia and is the, the virus, the un unexpected, potentially, a uh, factor in the Master of Masters plan, the likely the insect ancestor of uh, Ericus probably has the no name Keyblade, Master Xehanort's Keyblade, eventually. Uh, they wanted to do the Keyblade War, Lushu is Zigbar. There's a lot of stuff. There's there's a lot of stuff here. But I think I think that I think that covers pretty much pretty much everything. That is what the secret reports of Kingdom Hearts 3 had to tell us. Uh, to rank them together, I would say that these are the most interesting ones because they present more questions, uh, questions and intrigue than any other secret report in any other Kingdom Hearts game ever has. A lot of the other times, they were written by the villain of the game that you defeated or fought. Uh, this time, it was from various characters and characters who uh, were revealed, you know, like, aspects of them were revealed later. So, uh, in general, I think that they were really good. The idea of splitting it between different characters to cover certain aspects of the plot uh, was a really good idea. So, I think it's time to leave. Donald Duck, you did, this, you did this to me, Donald Duck. Donald Duck! Donald Duck, we can't leave! We can't leave Do <laughs> Donald, do you understand the problems I have here? Let's see. You understand? I come over here. I come over here. Look at these guys. 
Look at it. Fuck you. And take the big picture. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, I, I guess to... I guess to wrap this up, uh, next time on Kingdom Hearts 3, we will take on the game's most powerful boss. And I'm going to talk um, about how I feel about the game at this current time. I think that'll be fun. We'll get that going. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.